So a fully charged battery at 80% should now be about 207 miles, and we came out to find that ours was about 150-ish miles, which was way off. Okay, these are important numbers with respect to how charged the battery is. So GM had recommended charging to only 80 or 90% in a couple situations, and that would give me the two values you see for kilowatt hours here. And then the same thing if I multiply the battery's mileage, the rated mileage, by 80 and 90%, that gives me these two numbers. So you can calculate rate just like you do in a gas car. Miles per gallon is how quickly you use the gas. The same thing for electric, it's just miles per kilowatt hour, just different, different units of energy. So if I had a 25 gallon tank in a car and those 25 gallons got me 25 miles per gallon, then I could give an estimate, again theoretically, that I could drive 625 miles on one tank of gas. Similarly for electric vehicles, if I, if I had a 4 miles per kilowatt hour rate and I had a 66 kilowatt hour battery, I could say roughly get me 259 miles, probably a little bit more. But if more precisely what GM recommends or has nameplated, they, they say 66 kilowatt hours or 259 miles, that's 3.9 miles per kilowatt hour. So that's how uh, Chevy rates their battery. So if I considered an electric battery like a gas tank and said full was 66 kilowatt hours and I'm only allowed to charge at the 90%, that would be 233 miles, which means I would lose roughly 26 miles from that range if I didn't fully charge the battery, and that's where the loss of 26 miles come from. So now if I look at uh, the other recommendation that Chevy had before they did a software upgrade was don't drive the tank below 70 miles. So if I add the 26 miles from the top and the 70 miles from the bottom, that's 96 miles of range loss. Subtract that from 259, that gives me 163 miles of range out of a 259 mile battery. Okay, so the first charge that we got, we charged all the way up to 80% at the dealership and it was roughly between 14 and 16 degrees outside. So now as I boot up the car, you'll see that the range estimator comes up to be about 158 miles, which is below the 270, or I'm sorry, 207 capacity restriction that GM has now put on the vehicle. So there's some questions as where did this 49 miles go? And you can make the argument maybe 10, 15 miles can go to uh, loss of range due to the cold weather and so what I wanted to test is the up-and-coming warmer weather incidents will the capacity of the battery go up because again 80% of 259 miles or 66 kilowatt hours should be that 207 miles so that reduction should get me down to 270 207 miles out of 259 miles so here I turned on the heater and it dropped to 142. That's kind of been material, but I just wanted to see what the, what the heater would do. So uh, I'm going to test this some more and see what's, what's happening. Okay, so my second charge will be a, a level 2 charger at home. It's 240 volts. And I'm charging the car, and here's a graph of that. I charged it all the way up to, or at least what it took, 53 some odd kilowatt hours which you can see on the charger there 52.9 let's say it's 53 for argument's sake so 53 out of 66 is 80 percent of the the battery pack so that should display 270 miles of range and you'll see it doesn't okay here you can see here's a snapshot it's 151 miles the mileage has not budged Okay, for the third level 2 charge, I charged at 50 degrees, so this should be the optimum operating temperature, roughly between 50 and 60, and here's what I put into the car. I put in 35 kilowatt hours plus whatever was in the battery, so I fully charged the car, and yet I still don't see the 207 miles. Done charging our second charge after the 80% update and the first charge at the dealer got us to 
156 miles of range, but we charge at about, I don't know, somewhere between 14 to 16 degrees Fahrenheit, so you can make the argument that the cold will reduce some of the range. Now we've charged at almost 50 degrees outdoor temperature. Um, and this is this is off a little bit here. The actual outdoor temperature is about 45. We're showing 53, there's a little bit of difference. Um, and now we're at 151 miles of range. So that's counterintuitive just based on the fact that anytime you have lithium batteries, as the batteries get cold, your capacity or your range will go down. So what this is saying is if the the battery capacity will go up at 16 degree Fahrenheit or be more than if it were to be say roughly 50 degrees Fahrenheit the the capacity or your range will go down there, there there's something wrong here uh, this this number should be upwards around 190 to 200 again 80 percent of the the rated 259 mile uh, capacity should be a lot higher than this so I think there's some artificial range limitations going on here because that number should be a lot higher so I just wasn't happy with what was going on so I was thinking is there another variable besides the state of health state of charge and weather conditions for the range estimator and I wanted to do a couple things here to see if that will affect my predicted range last charge um, got down to about 56 miles it's about 42 degrees up and I'll wait till it hits about 50 and then kick this charge off and I'm also going to clear the um, miles per kilowatt hour. It looks like the default, if you erase the data, is 3.9, which aligns with the 66 kilowatt hours at 259 miles, so that boils down to right, right around 3.9. So let me clear this. All right, yep, so the, the average went up to 3.9, so that's the default. So I'm thinking that the counter from previous trips is affecting the prediction for the current trip, which I don't necessarily agree with, but let's see what happens. Okay, after the next charge, I got to 188 miles, which again, is not 207, and I've done this multiple times, and I cannot get above 188, even with resetting the trip counter. So it looks like that's what's affecting the range of the battery. This is one of the snapshots I took before I did any of the software updates, and here you can see my prediction is 274, but my average miles per kilowatt hour is a lot higher because it'll drive in more efficiently, and that's 4.2. So if you divide 4.2 into 274, you should get 65.23, uh, round it up to 66, really close to what the battery should be. So if you have a Chevy Bolt, let me know in the comments below uh, what your experience has been with the upgrade, and please like and subscribe.